you know guys lately i've been thinking a lot i've been doing a lot of thinking simply because it's starting to get harder and harder for me to switch on this microphone and come to you guys i know some people will say thomas what the hell do you mean that it's starting to get harder for you to come on the platform <laughs> You know, guys, I honestly never thought the platform would get to this position. I honestly never thought I would have so much responsibility on my shoulders, man, simply because of what I say. I remember back in the days when the platform started, when we only had 200, 300 subscribers. I used to have so much fun. I used to have so much fun, man. I would hail insults, I would scream, I would shout, I would do all sorts of things. <laughs> But now that the platform is growing, I can feel even the responsibility is going. I can feel the responsibility on my shoulders now that the platform is growing. I actually never thought in my life that I would sit here in my home and do these videos and these videos would impact people's lives in real life. I never thought that I would do a video and I would get calls, I would get emails from people saying that Thomas, thank you so much for doing that video, man. Some people say, Thomas, man, honestly, man, I love you, man, but I didn't appreciate you saying that. I never thought it would get to this position. This is why I say it is starting to get harder and harder. Because I'm starting to realize that as the platform is growing, the responsibility is also growing. As the platform is growing, I have to understand that there are consequences behind every single thing that I say. I have to be careful with what I say. I have to be careful with my words. I have to be considerate of other people, man. Back in the days, I didn't care what who, who thought of me. I didn't care anything. But now that is the platform has grown, I understand that I have to be responsible with my words. <laughs> it is no longer like before. It is no longer like before. You know, last week, you remember, guys, I did that video after the ANC and the EFF had a scaffold. In Ekurulene Council, I did the video, man. I came on the platform and I said, guys, I'm so disappointed at the, e at the ANC and the EFF. These people, man, whenever they have a disagreement, chaos will ensue. Every time the EFF and the ANC has a uh, disagreement, chaos will ensue. I'm very disappointed that, at these political parties because these are the same political parties who go around the country telling black people in our communities that, guys, you cannot even vote for other political parties. You cannot even consider voting for other political parties. We are the only options for you. So people say, okay, it's fine. We're gonna give you your we're gonna give you our votes. And when people give these political parties their votes, instead of these people being able to debate the issues so that the people on the ground their lives can be bettered every time when there's a disagreement, the chaos will ensue. And I came on the platform and I said, guys, I don't understand how is it possible? That these people cannot debate like adults. We understand that political parties disagree all the time. It is the nature of politics. Political parties disagree all the time. But why can these political parties disagree like adults? Why can these people man, behave like adults when the whole country is watching them? When the whole world is watching them? This is not only happening at the councils, at the, at, at the local councils. This is, only, this is also happening in parliament. Whenever the ANC and the EFF have a disagreement, chaos will ensue and the people on the ground will end up not getting any services because these people, instead of debating like adults, they decided to go and fight with, an, with one another. I remember I did that video last week and I got a couple of emails from the people man, of Ekurulene. A couple of people from Ekurulene actually contacted me. They said, Thomas, thank you so much for speaking out about this man. Thank you so much for speaking up about these people whom we thought that they are there to represent us. But it looks like these political parties who go around masquerading as custodians of black people, they do not care about us. Because if these political parties actually cared about the people on the ground, they would understand that a minor disagreement does not actually justify what they did. If political parties actually understand, they would understand that causing chaos in parliament, like it is not justifiable because you have a disagreement with, a, with, with another political party. I got emails, guys, from a couple of people from Ekurulene, man, and people were so hurt. And that's why I'm saying, man, you know, it is starting to get harder for me to come on the platform because I'm starting to realize that every single thing that I say, 
there are consequences behind every single thing that I say. There are consequences behind every single thing that I say. There are a couple of videos now where people actually contacted me and said, Thomas, man, can we meet? Thomas, how can we help you? Thomas, I didn't appreciate you saying that. Tom, that's why I'm saying it. Like, I never thought that the platform would get to this position. I never thought the platform would get to this position. And I must say that, guys, today we are going back to Ecolade. We are going back to Ecolade, man. And thank you so much to the people at Newsroom Live for going to the streets of Ecolade to speak with the people of Ecolade. And guys, when we watch these videos, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you to pay attention to the background. See how people are living on the ground. See why I am so mad at political parties who go around and masquerading as the custodians of black people. That's why I am so mad at these political parties. Guys, I'm going to try to make you see why I am so mad at these political parties. Please watch these videos, man, and see what the people are subjected to on the ground. This is what I was talking about. I remember some people last week, they said, no, Thomas, the EFF is right. The, the, the ANC started the nonsense. The ANC said, no, man, you know, the EFF are a bunch of bullies. These people started the nonsense, man. I remember I came on the platform. I said, guys, I don't care who started it. I don't care who is wrong between the ANC and the EFF. But these people need to understand that whatever they say, whatever they do, it impacts the people on the ground. These people need to understand that where every time they have a disagreement and decided to fight with one another, the people on the ground will end up not getting the services. This is one thing that political parties need to understand, especially these political parties who are masquerading as custodians of black people. This is what they need to understand. So guys, let's watch. The, the newsroom went back to a cool man and shout out to newsroom. I know that I criticize you guys a lot, but sometimes you guys there at newsroom and you like to give these ANC guys a time to lie. But thank you so much, guys, for going back to a cool lady to speaking with the locals at a cool lady man. And guys, see how the people of a cool lady are speaking. And you know, listening to the people of a cool lady, it is, it, it is also happening around in South Africa. What is happening in a cool lady is it is not only happening in a cool lady. It is happening all around us in South Africa. Agrarian residents say the coalition government in the metro uh, is failing residents. A scuffle broke out in council on Thursday during the tabling of a motion of no confidence against Mayor Sivuyil Ngodwan. Katle Hosokoto reports. There's a general feeling among some residents in Okuruleni that they've simply been forgotten by the powers that be. They say it appears that they're only remembered during election season. Uh, what is what? So, see, in this thing, see, Zamela, see, Zenzela, la, Eklaleni, see, Louis, see, Zenzela, see, Farama addresses, uh, planning activities, not that cool, na yo, uh, Uti, see, the speaker, la, speaker corner. The and guys, this is why I always tell people that guys, it is important for every one of us to exercise the independent thought. It is so important for every one of us to exercise independent thought. Because I can tell you now that many of these people that are living in these conditions, they are blackmailed into voting for these political parties that are doing nothing for them. Many of the people that are living in these conditions, they are being told that you cannot even consider voting for other political parties. You cannot consider doing that. That's why I am fighting so hard for people to be able to exercise independent thought. I mean, how long will black people live in these conditions? How long will black people live in, the co in these conditions and say that it is okay? It is not okay for people to live like this. It is not okay to see a lot of unemployment rate. It is not okay for people to roam around the streets the whole day. It is not okay for young people to be exposed to a lot of nonsense that is happening in the townships. It is not okay. When will our people actually start exercising independent thought? I can tell you that if 50% of the people who live in Ekurlene can actually exercise the independent thought, parties like the EFF and parties like the ANC, there will be non-existent in that place. If black people in South Africa can
can start to look at politics and start to say, guys, these guys, we are voting for them. And these guys, we require them to make sure that our lives improve. People's lives would actually be improved because people will not vote for anyone. People will not vote for anyone. People would understand that, man, if I vote for you, you better make sure that you're going to do the job because if you don't do the job, I'm going to vote for someone else. People are not making it clear to politicians. They're not making it clear to politicians, man. How is it possible that these people that are in councils have never even touched in Ekurlene? They have never went there to speak with the people, but they always appear during the elections. This is this thing always happens all like all over South Africa. This thing happens all over South Africa, man. We don't even know. Some of us we have never actually saw how our min, uh, our mayors are. Some of us don't even know our mayors. We don't know if your mayor is a man. You don't know if your mayor is a woman, but Come election time, then you're going to know, oh, this is my mayor. Ah, oh, this is the MMC for sports. Ah, this is the MMC for infrastructure. These people only come out when they need the votes from the people. But it looks like they don't care about the day-to-day -day lives of the people. That's why I say, guys, it is important for black people in South Africa. It is important for black people in South Africa to start understanding that some of these political parties are doing nothing but blackmailing them. Some of these political parties are using their skin colors against them. The sooner black people in South Africa understand that, the sooner they will start making better decisions. The sooner black people understand that these political parties that are masquerading, telling you that they have your black interest at heart, but when they get to the councils, the councils, the places where they are supposed to discuss the policy, the policy that is going to improve the people's lives on the ground, they are not doing that. They are not doing that. And when it comes election time, they are telling you again that, man, please, whatever that you do, Please do not even consider voting for other political parties. And people on the ground will take their words and not vote for other political parties and continue to vote for the same people who failed to provide them with services. Man, I'm so heartbroken, man. I'm so heartbroken at what is happening in Ekurlene because what is happening in Ekurlene, man, it's an example of what is happening in the whole country. What you're seeing in Ekurlene is what is actually happening in the whole country. And people don't understand that they have the power to change their minds. People don't understand that, man, I have the power to change my mind. I cannot continue sending these people to parliament to enjoy the perks in parliament. I cannot continue to send these people to various councils within our municipalities for these people to enjoy these perks and do nothing for us. When will our people say that, man, I am exercising my independent thought? I am exercising my independent thought. I am not going to allow anyone to tell me which political party to vote for. I am not going to allow anyone to tell me who is right for me. I am going to sit down and analyze all of these people and say, this is the right person for me. Community says in addition to no power supply, there are very few employment opportunities. In our government, South African government, what I know is that there is this thing that is called social labor plan whereby as much as we are living nearby to the gold one, gold one should be doing everything for us. We should be having electricity here. We should be having uh, our roads. Everything must be, should be, was supposed to be on point yeah. as much as we are staying next, next to the gold one mine. But now they are making millions out of, out of the gold one and, and we are benefiting nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Exactly, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. Some of these people who go around pretending to be representatives of the people, the people on the ground do not even know who these people are. Just imagine a councillor, the people there in Ekurlene, they don't know who their councillor is. Never mind the mayor. Never mind the mayor. The people of Ecuador, they don't know who their councillor is. They will only get to know who this person is when it's election time. They will only get to know who this person is when it's election time and this person coming to their neighborhoods to beg them for votes, to lie to them and say that we are going to make sure that you have electricity. We are going to make sure that your children are working in this mine. We are going to make sure that you have proper infrastructure. This is exactly what I mean. When will our people, men start saying enough is, is enough, man? When will they say enough is, is enough? How long can black people, men continue to live like this? 
how long can black people continue to subject themselves to conditions like this she says she won't vote. Government this resident says she will vote. Not to vote because of the let me live for deal. But here you wanna hold two simak let me live for deal. Vote at the end of vote. Impa here vote a fellow to see. Community members of Modder East have expressed their sadness at the state of their parks and recreational facilities. It's bad. It's bad. We can't be uh, sitting at parks that are filthy, there's glass everywhere, there's exposed drugs. Plus, we buy a school here. So, it's very bad. It's very bad. Uh, even in the evenings, we cannot sit here in the park because the street lights are off. Uh, Ms. Melissa recently mentioned that for six years she's been fighting the street lights issue. Mm. So, they are not really helping because nothing has been taken seriously. As you can see, do you think it's working? It's not working. They are there just to fight for the seats. For what good reason? Exactly. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's why I was so furious last week when people said that, no, these people are fighting for the people of Ekurlene. I said, man, there is no way those people are fighting for the people of Ekurlene because if they understood this is how the people of Ekurlene are living, they would not conduct themselves in that manner. If those guys there in Ekurlene Council actually understood this is how the people of Ekurlene are living, they would not conduct themselves in that manner. They are not fighting for the people of Ekurlene. They are not fighting for the people of Ekurlene. Black people need to be able to see who is fighting for them. Black people need to understand who is fighting for them. Those people last week who were causing chaos in Ekurlene Council, they are not fighting for the people of Ekurlene. They are not. They are not. It can't be that they are fighting for the people of Ekurlene, but the people of Ekurlene, they keep living in those conditions. It can't be. It can't be. And right now, they only showed us a fraction of what is happening in Ekurlene. This is exactly what is happening. Even where I stay here in the first state, this is exactly what is happening. This is exactly what is happening even in, in Johannesburg. Like, everywhere where these people are, the same people who go around masquerading themselves as the custodians of black people, wherever they are, black people are living in these conditions. Black people are living in these conditions wherever where these people are. So how can we come and say these people are fighting for us. How can me as a black man come and say that, man, you know the EFF and the ANC, they are fighting for me. They are fighting for my life to be better. How, is, how, how, can, I, how can I say that? I cannot say that. I cannot say that. And the people on the ground, they cannot say that. No one can actually say that, that these people are fighting for them. So what the hell were they fighting for last week? What the hell were they fighting for? Because clearly they are not fighting for the people of Ekogolid. Our people need to be better, man. Our people need to be better. Our people need to understand the kind of power they have. People have power, man. You know, I'm always disappointed when I hear people saying that, you know, the government has failed us so much that I am not going to vote in these upcoming elections. This is how people are. Instead of simply voting out this corrupt and inept African National Congress, people will decide to sit at home. People will decide to sit at home. And when the ANC wins the elections, the same people will be on the streets protesting because there are no lights, there is no infrastructure, there are no jobs. People will be protesting. But these are the same people that decided to sit at home and do nothing. They decided to sit at home and do nothing. If you could ask, her, what would you be doing on that day? If you don't want to vote, what, 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 what exactly would you be doing that day? Nothing. So you would rather sit, you would rather sit at home and do nothing 
instead of actually fighting for your community. You can see this is not how you want to live. Why don't you make a different why don't you make a different choice? Why don't you make a different choice? <laughs> man, I remember some person last week said that Thomas man there's no need for you to fight for these people, man. It's already too late. I remember I, 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 I forgot the name of that gentleman who said that Thomas man <laughs> it's already too late you have already lost it looks like our people are okay living in these conditions as much as there are a lot of people in Ekulin who are not happy about living in these conditions but you have to understand that the people who are always dragging us back are in majority are in majority that's why in South Africa today we are suffering under the African National Congress because majority of the people in the country they are not willing to kick out the African National Congress. So they are dragging the whole country down. They are dragging the whole country down. This is exactly what is happening within our communities. A lot of people in our communities, instead of going out and saying, man, <laughs> I'm sick and tired of these people, man, I'm going to vote for Action SA. Let me give Action SA a chance. Let me give the Democratic Alliance a chance. Let me give uh, Raiz Mzanti a chance. Let me give other people a chance. People will say, no, if I don't vote for the ANC, I do not vote. But the same people, I can promise you now, the same people will be on the streets protesting because there are no services. We are, we, we, we are South Africans. We need to vote and we need to be governed by parties that will work for us. The freedom that we, our forefathers fight for is not the kind of freedom that we are having today. Exactly. Our forefathers, man, would turn in their graves. Our forefathers will turn in their graves, man. That's why I love coming on the platform and say that, guys, especially for the people who have experienced apartheid, how do you feel to see where South Africa is today? The people who were the victims of apartheid, how do you feel to see where South Africa is today? If you have lost your family members, if you have lost your brother, if you have lost your sister, your husband, your wife, back in apartheid, how do you feel to see where South Africa is today? Our forefathers are turning in their graves. People who actually put their lives on the line so that we can enjoy this democracy. They are turning on the graves. Seeing how we are living. They are turning in their graves. And the fact that in South Africa we don't have the spirit of patriotism. The people in this country, they don't want to fight. man. <laughs> they don't want to fight. There is no spirit of, of patriotism in South Africa. man. We are okay with everything that is happening. We are okay. We are okay. We are normalizing the things that we are not even supposed to normalize. We are normalizing the things that we were not even supposed to normalize. Residents implore politicians to put the people first before throwing punches during council sittings. You know, I fight for the people. If you can pull a punch towards a fellow councillor, rather fight for your people. Don't fight physically. Because at the end of the day, the people are suffering. The residents of Ward 72 suffer daily. At the same time, following last week's brawl in council, the city has confirmed that a multi-party meeting with the speaker taking place on Monday will discuss the way forward. For Newsroom Africa on Channel 405, I'm Gatla Osohoto, in Ekuruleni. So guys... <sighs> It's bad, man. It's bad. It's bad. Guys, please tell me what you think, man, on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabal, so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.